joining us. I hope I unmuted myself. No, I just muted myself. Did I? I'm unmuted. Awesome. I always make the same mistake because the button doesn't show it. Thanks for joining us. SF Live episode 212. As you know, we're doing this all live and I'm joined in the studio by a very special guest this morning. Our second studio guest. It's Adam Lundin and uh, we'll be switching over to him. We'll be changing camera angles here in a second. And uh, he'll join us to talk Jose Maria resources. Quite excited. Interesting project down there in Argentina. And I'm trying to get some more information on how we as retail investors can, can make money on this interesting development project. So stay tuned for that. But before we switch over, of course, you know the spiel. Follow us on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter. Hit the like and subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on that little bell notification as well. We do all our interviews live. That makes that way you make sure or you, you hear it straight from the horse's mouth. And uh, it's unfiltered, unedited. That's why when I stumble, it's live. You, you'll notice. You will notice. Let me switch over to my guest. And uh, Adam, thanks for coming in. It's awesome. I'm still a bit nervous because it's the second time I have a guest in the studio. And I'm uh, really excited for you to join. And uh, thanks for being our like, eh, smaller guinea pig. Like we had one big one where we had a bit of audio issues. So thanks for coming in. Awesome, Kai. Thanks a lot for having me. Pleasure to be here. No, nah, no worries. No worries. It's great. Um, Jose Maria Resources. We're going to talk about it. We're going to skip the family part. I've watched yeah. a couple like interviews. I think that's been talked been about to, to death yeah. almost, right? Yeah. Um, but really excited for you to be here. Um, Jose Maria Resources, development company, massive resource, mm -hmm. but only 350 million market cap. Mm -hmm. Before we dive into the details, catch us up on Jose Maria, Re Jose Maria Resources. Give us a 30, 60 second over. Yeah, for sure. Jose Maria Resources, you know, is a discovery made by the lending group that back in 2004. We've been since. Now it's, it's like lending gold and it's in its own company, Jose Maria Resources. It's a single asset company. Our sole focus is, is to build a project. And so we finished a feasibility study last November. It was robust. Uh, we went into bridging engineering. Uh, we'll be shortly going into basic engineering and we'll be looking to start construction in the next year. Big project. We have a billion tons of reserves, 6.7 billion pounds of copper, 7 million gold, and 31 million silver. And I, I find the production profile very attractive. You know, 130,000 tons of copper, 230,000 ounces of gold, and just over a million silver for a 19. Oh, that yeah. is not bad at all. But capex yeah. is three billion, right? Yeah, capex is 3.1. Um, probably, probably going higher. Uh, I see escalation across the board, but. I copper price going higher so in our study you know three dollar copper fifteen hundred dollar gold eighteen dollar silver and that got us a one and a half billion dollar uh, mpv and discount and it was a 16 percent irr 15 percent uh using today's commodity prices you know, you're looking at a 4.2 billion dollar mpv and uh irr closer to so we can handle uh, the price escalation Okay, we're, we're going to dive into the project a bit more okay. in, a, in a minute. Like, uh, I always like catching up everybody on the cap structure as okay, well. Right? Sure. Um, give, us, give us the highlights there, and yeah. I've got some follow-up questions, obviously. Yeah, no, it's a clean structure. We have uh, 380 million shares outstanding. Uh, the family owns roughly 39%. Um, and it was never the idea that we have to own a fixed percentage. We've been writing the bulk of the equity checks as we've been advancing the project, and our ownership has increased that way. But yeah, no, pretty tight structure. Yeah. No warrant. So 380 million shares, 39% family owned. Yep. But no institution. We used to, have, we had some institutions. Uh, they've, you know, they've been selling or not participating in the latest equity raises. I think a lot of, you know, the bigger funds have been looking at billion cap market cap plus. So perhaps they'll come back. Yeah, it's interesting because we, we talked off mic for, for a minute as well. Because yeah. copper, everybody's talking about copper. Copper gold is the next big thing. Mm -hmm. Like Barrick CEO is talking about it, but nobody's yeah. willing to make a move. You want to speculate on why that is? I think, you know, the copper price uh, rebounded and ran hard. And then, you know, it allowed everyone's balance sheets to, to get cleaned up and also allowed everyone to look internally. What projects do I have in-house? What brownfields do I have? What can I be doing? And then also you have other countries or maybe those projects are in going through changes and, and it's, okay, well, Maybe we want to go forward, but do we stop now? So I think it's just been a lot of inward looking at companies. Uh, but soon enough, I really want to grow your, your production profile, get access to cheap debt in this world. And, and you know, if you want to add it in a meeting, there's, company. there's not many Jose Marias. So. Cheap debt, like yeah. we just talked about it. Like mining companies always seem to be the wrong thing at the wrong time, right? Now is the time to take on debt. It doesn't get cheaper than yes. like, what is it now? 
five or plus two percent if you're if you're good if you're a bigger yeah. company yes yeah. so now now is the time to do it um we we got sidetracked for a second from cap structure cash position is a big one as well where, where did we sit there we just raised last quarter 52 million canadian uh that was a good equity raise i believe have uh, quarter just came I know this better but i think maybe we have 30 million okay yeah. Okay. No. Fair, fair, fair enough. Because next, next quarter, like it's going to lead into like what are the plans, future yeah. plans, are you finance? Like you, you mentioned, advanced engineering studies and yeah. things like that. Um, just, just back on the financing, real quick. Who, who came in? Who bought the bulk of the shares? The Did you stay was, pro rata? Did your yeah, family stay yeah, pro rata? Yeah, family stayed pro rata. Uh, then I believe a portion of it we did with with BMO was a bot deal. Uh, no, we had we had good uptake. We were able to upsize. I think we we went out with forty. We were able to upsize to two. So you know we had. Some shareholders continue to come in, and then it was is pretty good spread between Sweden and and the rest of Europe, states and Canada. Oh, fantastic! All right, glad to hear that. Um, so thirty million in the bank. Let's talk about how you're playing. All right, uh, pre development phase right now. It's not cheap. You're still waiting for EIA. Is that correct? Yes. In Argentina. Yeah. Um, detail engineering. It runs a bit through the budgets and plans, and then we're going to dive deeper. Also, like ge ge logically, maybe mm -hmm. the project. I'm not. I stumble with that word even, right? But but run us through that. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we want to be ready. We want to get our, our class two estimate. That's what you get after basic engineering. We look to get that in on May, and, and then really we want to start early work. So spending will we'll start to ramp up, but also, you know, we'll keep our hand on the throttle. We have running different scenarios. Currently, you know, submitted our EIA in February uh, this year. and. 12 months there's anticipation that maybe it comes in early if it comes in early maybe maybe we hit the gas a little harder push the project forward more but it'll require further we'll do a little more infill uh we'll do more geotechnical drilling uh we'll take a look at our design again 42 foot sag mills go to 40 uh little things like that whatever whatever risk we see that we can take out of the project make those changes during this bridging and during basic with an updated project. Now, if I understand correctly, you're already putting the building team together. Yeah. So you're fully committed. You're fully convinced. Also, you won't have any issues in Argentina getting a getting the EIA, but also any financial issues like ad additional royalties put on the project. So you're pretty certain that political risk, financial risk, permitting risk is all covered. Yeah, we're very comfortable in Argentina. We've been there a very long time, close to 30 years now. Uh, we have close dialogue. You know, everyone pretty much on a first name basis. Um, and, and it's very helpful. Uh, I like being in San Juan. We just recently had the president of Argentina in San Juan in the project and endorsed mining, which was very nice to see. You know, we'll also look to, similar to what we did in, in Ecuador, we there, is look to put a fiscal stability agreement intact, you know, to give lenders comfort to the project as, as we fund our CapEx, and also for, to give us comfort that, you know, nothing's going to be renagged on, and if that's going to happen, we'll... Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm trying to put the horse before the cart. It's like 19 year mine life is actually not bad. Yeah. And, and you mentioned you're doing some more geotechnical work yeah. as well. Are you planning on expanding the resource mine life, um, exploration drilling? Like where were you at on the, like, my, my, I think my question is more, yeah. what are some levers you can, you can pull on to, to improve even on the feasibility study that you put out last? Yeah, I think on the feasibility study, you always want to have more, as much certainty as you can. You know, we brought on the builder team. It's going to be little, led by Phil Brummett. This guy has a career and I'm very honored for him to join the team. You know, Hanke Pungaroom finding a camp area. Um, and now he's gonna build a project and he has, you know, that that resume of building multi billion dollar projects. There's not many many people of that stature around. So very happy to have him on board. And when he comes and looks at the project, he needs to know when he opens up the deposit, you know, what he's gonna be mining daily, what is his gonna be so he wants to do a little more infill. As we do infill, we'll also do some deeper holes. You know, perhaps that 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 reserve comes up. You know, beyond a billion tons. I think there's definitely potential there. The mine life, and then there's some regional targets. Obviously, we'll have a bunch of rigs going, and if we can move to achieve our goals of the infill program and the geotech and and have time, we'll move those rigs over to drill some some other. Targets. Okay, so maybe some higher grade targets as well that could increase uh, payback as well. Maybe I think it would be more, more satellite deposits just outside that we could wrap into the project to extend the. 
Yeah. Let's talk about CapEx um, yeah. as well. Three billion is, qu is quite a nugget yeah. uh, for a 350 million market cap yes. company. V various questions here. A, like, is there a staged approach? You need the three billion on day one when you make that construction decision, or is that more of a staged one? Because I know construction is like three, three and a half years. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Can you break that into certain payments or? Yeah, construction is around 36 months. Um, I think for us, what's different is we don't need all the, probably most companies want all the capital and then get going. Yeah. We're happy to you know, do it in, in, in milestones to do it because of the robust production profile we do have. So 30% of our revenue is precious metals. And there's levers there you can pull on if, if you want to do a stream, I'm available. And, and also owning 100% of the project, bringing a partner that way. I don't have a, a clear message today of saying exactly how the CapEx is going to be funded, but I've seen enough and I have enough discussions that I'm confident we'll be able to fund the CapEx. And, and, and the goal is, you know, with the family owning 39%, um, if I can be in production and, and maintain that ownership or maintain the, the close to the same ownership as shareholders have today, it's going to be a great win for everybody. And so that's a big goal to, to try and minimize dilution. But also at the same time, I don't want to be, you know, giving away uh, dreams. No. So, uh, you know, have to be calculated and have to take a smart approach. But I'm confident there's enough levers to pull to be able to get this, this mind. Interesting. Okay, so so breaking it up in various payments is an interesting aspect of it as well. Stream is one. I'm, I'm looking at silver one, in yeah. particular because it's only um, only a million ounces of silver yeah. uh, a year. So that's something I'm I'm sure you could get yeah. rid of to a degree. And we could do some of our gold as well. Wrap that into to a precious metal royalty. I have ten billion dollars there. There'll be some some debt on the project. And obviously, trying to minimize the the equity debt, and then also bring in a partner and see what those terms look like be ideal to the operator and forward. That's a good point because one note, one point I noted down here is corporate strategy. Because yeah. you're in an area with Philo Mining and yeah. NGX as well. Mm -hmm. um, and bringing in a partner, would it make sense? Like, is there even a partner out there that would be able to consolidate the whole district? I so it's like I'm thinking way way bigger picture, maybe yeah. a few years down the road. But it, look, looking at that big picture, because they were all all companies were part of the same group at yes. some point. Yeah, right now, you're all separate entities. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense to roll it back into one? And I think you made a comment in one of the interviews. I watched it. That's why it's fresh in my memory this morning. Um, that one of the companies needs to be the first one. Yeah, and yeah. then the rest will fall into place. Yeah, we just need to get up and going. We need to demonstrate to to the markets and to the world. You know, mining is can be done successfully in San Juan. And these big projects can be brought online. And we propose a marine most advanced. It's, it's very simple. It's fit, more trip ratio. You've got access to groundwater in Argentina. Um, and so that, you know, it's still a big capex, but that'll be the first one to go. And as we continue to explore Philo, there, you know, there's going to be scenarios that we look at to see what does that do, especially the high grade that they're hitting. It's not going to take a lot of tons to add a lot. It's not going to require moving a lot of tons to, to add to your uh, production profile. So we look at all that, and and is only okay. But still, those are big goals, and, and to demonstrate to the market that we can execute. Maybe let, let's highlight, because we had Jamie back on, I think it was in May. I'll, I'll link to it in the video, in the description below as well. Um, the, the working relationship. Like, it's yes, you split the projects apart, but yeah. I think it's still part of the same group. You yeah. still share offices, in, from what I understand. Yeah. You share a camp. Yes. Uh, in Argentina. Yeah. Um, what, what's the distance between the projects? and 12 kilometers is the, yeah. is the distance between the projects. We share a camp. Jamie's down the, you know, a couple of doors down from me in the office. I'm chairman of as well. So, you know, it's important that we do what's, what's best for both, both companies and, and that's the shareholders. Um, but, I, I, of course, I think if, if a partner wants to come into Jose, they're going to want to see if they can get so it would, would make sense, wouldn't yeah. it? So that really eliminates smaller players in the market, in my yeah. opinion. So I'm quite curious to see. And we, we discussed as well, like everybody, as, I, as I said, like everybody's been talking about copper, green energy revolution, yeah. countries capping or saying, hey, we need all, all electric vehicles. Like mm -hmm. that's the main driver, in my opinion, right now, because it's so dominant in the media is the electric vehicles, for mm -hmm. example, by 2030. Yeah. But like uh, you, you will go into production. What is it? Twenty twenty six. If everything goes well. Yeah. Well, you know, end of twenty five, early twenty six is timeline, right? Which so. I, I'm very cheap. 
Yeah, let's put that in perspective of cyclicality timing wise yeah. as well. Do you think you were going to hit the sweet spot there? I think, uh, yeah, I think we'll be, I think, you know, if you look at trading houses reports and stuff like that, they see very good years in 26 to 28. And so, yeah, if we can come on, that'd be great. Yeah, I'd be super fortunate. But, you know, <laughs> I, I just, I'm just always cautious in mining, you know, whenever it believes in one thing, it normally tends just, to go the other way. You just got to be cautious. You got to make sure we build a project that can last. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. And 19-year 19, 19 mine life already. So mm -hmm. that's that's going to be a while. And I'm sure, as you said, you're exploring. Um, actually, let's talk about exploration for a yeah. second. Um, budgets, plans, meters. Do you have some more details for that? Like wildcat exploration as well. Can, can you run us through your plans there? Yeah, we, we've carved out, you know, if we have time uh, to do about three to 5,000 meters on, on, on pure exploration. Yeah. And then the, the rest will be focused on in. Okay, only three to five thousand meters. Yeah, it sounds like you need a lot more. But like, what, what, what's your strength? Obviously, capital, I guess. Um, no, it's more just again that'd be the initial. If yeah. we're successful, you can quickly add meters okay. to that. And and now that we we used to always have seasons, and and now we've winterized the camp, so we're going to be up there all year round. Um, so if we have success, that that meter is you know that number will quickly grow. Yeah, that sure. makes sense. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, bit of a controversial discussion or question as well. Like 39% family ownership. Yeah. Why is it not private? Should it be private? Would it make things easier for you? Um, we've always operated in public companies. And again, like I talked at the beginning, like it wasn't a plan to go to 39%, <laughs> okay. yeah. but here we are financing and, you know, we're pushing the project forward in some tough years. Again, writing the bulk of the check, which increased our ownership in, in, in the company. Um, would being private be easier? Maybe I, I'd be able to have a better valuation or could, could you know, show Demand why I should have valuation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> being private, but uh, no, I'm, I'm public and that's the point. Yeah. So. No, and, and, and you mentioned as well, like, and as I said before, like for us as retail shareholders, like how are you making money? Because we're always concerned, of course, and the Lundin family doesn't have, have a reputation of that at all, but sweetheart deals, family gives in the debt or something at, yeah. at favorable terms, let's say 8 9%, way above market. Mm -hmm. we, we've seen that happen before, yeah. right? That's why, like, burn child yeah. as investors, um, you, you're aligned. Like, yeah. what, what, what's, what's your goal, actually? Like, as, as the family, of course, it's make money, but what does that look like? Like, as a family, we're... We're, we're shareholders, plain vanilla shareholders like everyone else, and, and the goal is always to, to maximize shareholder value. We think we're going to show better returns over time by building the project. Um, but obviously, you know, if, if a bid comes in, we're going to have to properly evaluate that. And, and obviously, if it's shares and we can still continue and, and, and ride the upside, okay, great. But I, it's always maximizing shareholder value. That, it was an uh, obvious question yeah, with yeah. an obvious answer to yeah. it, right? So. No, no, you got to ask. And, <laughs> And it'd be great to find a way to weed out those bad apples in, in business, but people just support them. But that's we can spend hours on that yeah. topic as well. Right? Um, just had a great follow-up question. It, it uh, escaped me. Thirty-eight percent. Oh, I lost it. That's too bad. Um, no, let, let, let's talk a bit more timeline. So EIA expected October. Um, we, we, we we anticipated February, but um, and that's what we put in the schedule, but. What we're seeing in Argentina is, is you know, the primaries coming up and in, in midterms in November. And this is a country that, that's been in a recession for three years. Right now. And, you know, they want to get foreign investment going. They want to get their mining sector going. They want to get their natural resource sector going. Um, incredible to see. It was great to see, you know, positive comments yesterday in the province from the president. And I think mining can do a lot, a lot for Argentina. And they want to push that. So there is this chance that perhaps the EIA comes, comes in early and we'll be ready for that. But uh, you know, right now our plans are, are ready for February. Comes in early, we'll be ready. Yeah. Um, overall, run us a bit through news flow that we can expect. Um, let, let's assume it happens in October. Let's just say perfect yeah. world scenario, right? It happens in October. Are you willing to pull the finan financing trigger in November or right thereafter? Like run us a bit through that timeline and, yeah, so and also news flow. Yeah, so if it comes in, then we get EIA. You'll see like EIA, basic engineering, fiscal stability, financing, construction. And so it's a very busy time mm -hmm. until we start that construction in the middle of the year. And so you'll, you'll see a lot of 
I guess big catalysts from from the host nation. You know, CIA is big, fiscal stability is big, and then on our side, getting ready and, and seeing this construction construction team take form, um, and then seeing you know potentially if we, if we can bring in partnerships. And, and you know, the goal is to to demonstrate to the market that I can push the project forward uh, without diluting shareholders. Achieve that. Okay, that sounds very promising. Um, my, my mind went to the back to back the thirty. The Oh, no, no. I, I wish I'm, I'm waiting for it. I'm just, that's why I got to start thinking about other yeah. stuff. It'll come back to me. But um, lots planned for the next months until you, or the next few months until you start actually official construction. Mm -hmm. Thirty million enough to get there? Will you have to refine, uh, uh, put another financing in place? We'll see. I mean, if we have to another, put another financing in place, uh, the family's there, and, and because we have confidence in in the project and we have country and, and confidence in the project. so. If we have to do a, a financing uh, interim, you know, the family's there. Almost a broad deal. Somebody does it again. Yeah. You bring 40%. That's an easy fee, right? That, yeah. <laughs> it's a broad deal. Yeah. <laughs> no, fantastic. No, okay. I, I don't, you could be going on, on bot deals, but yeah, no, my, my dad likes uh, non-brokered private placements, but I understand why we have a lot of good research analysts. Get, well, you got to pay the street, it. right? And it usually loves you back if that happens, so, or it tends to love you back. Like I wouldn't say I wouldn't make a general rule out of yeah. it, but uh, it's a little short term. But it's a it's you got to you got to grease the, the wheels a little yeah. bit, right? Otherwise, it doesn't work. It's mining, especially big capex projects. You do need bigger support. So, mm -hmm. um, but 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 news flow in general. So you you're exploring right now. Like, do you plan to put out some more exploration results? Like we talk big picture item or big big items. Anything smaller interim? Well, that right we now be we're forward to? right now. Um, so we share this camp, we're expanding this camp, uh, increasing it to 820 beds from 240. That's taking place. Um, Bilo is going to be starting their drilling first, we plan to start our drilling in, in mid-November. Okay. And then, you know, that's when you see us, you know, if we want to do some exploration, perhaps it's for January. Uh, so you won't see those results until. Yeah. Well, while I have you, I have to yeah. ask like these G initiatives as well. Like, what are you doing on the ground? Um, to sort of satisfy that Eve or environmental is, is what, sorry, uh, ESG initiatives. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, what yeah, are yeah. you doing on the ground? You you briefly touched on water for a second. That's mm -hmm. all secured. Can you can you give us a bit of an, of an update or not an update, just an overview what that looks like as well? Like yeah. I'm focusing a bit on the E, but yeah. just mentioned social as well. Yeah, Governance, yeah. I think you got covered. Yes. But uh, let's talk about the ENS there. And the ENS. Okay, first, I guess I'm tackling the social side, you know, big benefit of the group is, is having access to the Lending Foundation, which will be the architect on our, on the social programs and, and show the company the best way to, to implement those. So the bring up its its own office in San Juan and it's gonna play a key role for Jose Maria and Philo. And you know the biggest benefiters of, of mines have to be the, the local communities and that's a big focus of ours. Make sure as much local employment as possible and then social programs make make people understand, okay, yeah, we'll be using this water, uh, using some water, we'll recycle as much as we can. And then you know it's gonna not gonna affect the the local town's water usage at all. And make sure that message is clear. Uh, but then it's also little things like great success at at Fruta del Norte and lending gold, starting a local, helping a local catering company get the contracts, and then be able to you know continue to run that catering business when the mines are gone. And so if you can do sustainable social programs, is really what we do. And can, can I jump yeah. in real quick uh, yeah. before we get to the E part? Yeah. Um, what, what are they asking locally? Like, what, what are the demands, needs, like, that you can help? Like, I, I really like the, the self-help yeah. approach, right? To help them set up a company that they can run themselves. Yeah. Is that what they're looking at in Argentina for as well? Or is, that, I think does it, is it different? There's a lot of excitement about the project. Everyone just wants the opportunity. You know, if there's any contracts, you know, locals can, 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 uh, can apply and, and, and try and get those contracts. If it's catering, if it's roadworks, whatever. Um, you want to make sure that's open. You want to do as much local procurement as possible um and so i think i think they're really just looking for for stable employment and, and job opportunity and growth and mining provides for okay no so it covers the bases like it's it's pretty much the same as everywhere else you don't forget about them like it's, yeah. it's important empower like, them right yeah and, and make sure they benefit the most and, and as you said i like the fact that you said once you're gone or the mine is gone they can actually sustain themselves Keep going. yeah exactly that's the important part Right, like we've often seen it, the mine is gone and everything falls to pieces. Well, yeah, I've yeah. been to many little mining towns that just crumbled oh. and fell apart. And that's, There's, I think that's the super exciting thing with with San Juan and Argentina. You know, it's minerally endowed, the similar way Chile and Peru are, and Chile and Peru are number one in proper producing nations. 
Argentina can get there, could always get there. Uh, but now you, you see a big push wanting to get there. So I think it's a special time to. Let's talk about the E real quick, the yeah, environmental yeah, yeah. side. Um, water, we know um, Barrick, Pasqualama, yeah. had massive issues with, with water and water rights and how it was all handled. Mm -hmm. uh, devil is in the detail there. But uh, run, run us through that side as well. Like, how are you handling that? How are you taking care of it? Yeah, so on, on, on the water side, you know, the Andes Plateau, it's, it's quite sharp on the Chilean side, and, and then it's a good plateau on the Argentina side, and there's abundant groundwater. You know, there's not many, not many mines up there, so no one really pulling on it. So again, big advantage. Um, and then also a big advantage of still being the party here that made the discovery. So, you know, we've done a bunch of baseline work, and, and we have data going back, you know, five plus years on on a, on a lot of stuff, and so I think we're that continuity carries on with us. So you can demonstrate, uh, you do your EI and everything, and, and probably you know try and do do more than the norm, and able to do more than more the norm since we've been with the project for such. A Adam, thank you so much for joining us. Okay. I, I feel assured as a retail investor that we're doing the right thing here. Okay, good. And uh, that we can all make money at the same yes. time because often it's like I mentioned that before. It's like it's my biggest worry as a retail investor when somebody owns about forty percent of a company. Mm -hmm. As a retail investor, you just fall off a cliff. Yeah. Right. You, you start making doing your financing deals, and retail just get shocked. Yeah. That's just that's yeah. why. Like I think we clearly worked it out that that's not the case. Interests are aligned. Yeah. So thanks. No, we still can raise our ownership uh, if that's done through through equity placements or you know still buying shares in the market. So uh, I find it attractive and come along with me. Yeah. And we're just at the beginning of the resource cycle as well. We're not going to talk about mega cycles, super cycles, whatever term you want to use for mm -hmm. that. But we're just at the beginning of it. So. Appreciate it. Thanks, Adam, man. thanks for coming in. Awesome. Second guest, so really appreciate that. Great to be and, here. And uh, it's good to chat with you. Thanks so much. Thank you. And uh, everybody else, thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us here on SF Live, episode 212. We were joined by Adam Landine here. We talked Jose Maria. I keep stumbling with the name. <laughs> Jose Maria Resources. And uh, make sure to follow us here on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter. Hit the like and subscribe button, of course, as well. We do all our interviews live, so make sure you use that to your advantage. Uh, tune in when we